Welcome back to Resurrection Sunday here at the New Shallow Christian Center. The word of the Lord said they went into the sepulcher and they said, why are you looking for Jesus amongst the dead? He is not here for he has risen just as he said. Let's give Jesus a hand that he rose on this day. We're also excited that this is day 31 of our financial freedom fast. The word of the Lord said, Lord, give us wisdom so that we're diligent with our resources. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Jacqueline Gordon, Deacon Haywood Gordon, and the entire New Shallow Christian Center family, we invite you to like, click, and share a worship experience like no other. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us give the Lord some praise this morning. Who is happy to be in the house of the Lord? This morning we are going to gather in a fashion that is unique. That is the essential reasoning for our faith. He is risen. And because he is risen, we can rise again. So I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask you to join me in faith. That as we enter into this portal of time, that we recognize the power of God that's about to hit this house. Say amen for me. If you agree with the power of God rising in this room, I need to hear some joyful sounds. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as we converge in this moment of prayer, Father God, we begin to open up our hearts. We begin to open up our minds as you open up heaven. Father, we pray, God, that as we begin to converge on the mount of prayer, God, that you will release a blessing you will release an anointing of praise release fire from the north from the south from the east and the west father because you are risen we can rise again we can rise from slumber we can rise from sin we can rise from depression we can rise from mistakes father we thank you that you are doing a new work, a great work, a powerful work in us. Christ in me is the hope of glory. God, release your glory in my belly. Release your glory in this room. Release your glory in my bishop. Release your glory in your people. In the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God begin to burn. Burn in your people. Release some folks uh, from chains and shackles uh, release uh, the families uh, release uh, the finances uh, release release uh, in this moment uh, God we rise this morning in prayer and we say thanks in Jesus name it is so and so it is hallelujah come on clap those hands hallelujah I feel that thing. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your anointing, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your spirit, Jesus. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Because you rose with all power in your hands. So for that, God, we say thank you. We came to glorify the name of Jesus. Help me lift his name. Help me lift the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless be the name of God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to step into the joy of the Lord. He's been too good to me for me to stand still. So today we're going to step into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you all over this place. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Step into the joy of the Lord. 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 Come on, clap those hands. Step into the joy of the Lord. Step into the joy of the Lord. Come on, step into the joy of the Lord. Step into the joy of to the joy of the Lord. Step into 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 the joy of the Lord. Come on, come on, say, my heart's been thirsty. Yes, it has. Greater than I imagine. Come on, that sounds real good. Let's say it again. 
him for the greater we also indulge him for the glory of the lord that's filling the temple right now hallelujah Hallelujah. we give you glory jesus we thank you for your presence now thank you lord yes the world will bow down and say you are god Hallelujah. hallelujah every man will bow down and say you are king yes you are so let's start right now why would we Anybody want to be in his presence? Oh, King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Can we sing it together? Yes, the world. Yes, the world. We're bound down. Bound down and say you are God.
until you come again. I will sing hallelujah until you come again. Yes, I will. And I'll dance in your presence until you Somebody give it to him, and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Come on, somebody tell the Lord I come to sing hallelujah. We will sing hallelujah till you come again. I came with my testimony, I'll dance. We'll dance in your presence until you come again. Lift your hands, say, King of Glory. somebody in the name of love and tell them the king of glory is here yeah yeah good to see you in the house of the lord he's filling the temple to see you. Yeah, you are. 
I know Bishop's gonna do formal greetings, but I wanna do this little song. We love to worship. We love to work. We love to shout in the Holy Ghost. We are glad that you're here. We are glad that you're here. I hope it shows. And we hope that it shows. I just wanna say, welcome to the family of Shiloh. You got it. Come on. We love to worship. We love to worship. We love to worship. We love to worship. I'd like to shout. We love to shout in the Holy Ghost. I'm just setting the stage. We are glad that you're here. I hope it shows. And we hope that it shows. Welcome. Welcome to the family. Say welcome. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. One more time. Welcome. Welcome to the family of Shiloh. Welcome. Turn around to two, three people. Just say welcome. Welcome. Now I'm just setting the stage because Bishop coming, I gotta leave. But this is the highest service in Christendom. And I know that we celebrate this time, Brother Bobby, because Jesus got up. But I'm thanking God on this Sunday that because he got up, y'all ain't talking back to me. I'm getting up. And so I need somebody to give God just a quick 20 second I got up praise. The devil tried to keep me down, but I'm getting up. Somebody rise, shine, give God the glory. Look down your row, say rise, shine, let's give God the glory. Tell him I'm not a prophet, but today I prophesy. It's already done. 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 Well, if you believe it, come on, clap your hands. Let's receive our bishop. Hallelujah. I love my church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is certainly good to us. And we're glad about it. Amen. I decree and declare along with the elder today that it's already done. Whatever you stand in need of is already done. I'm so glad that he woke us up this morning. And he started us on our way. Hallelujah. It's 2024. And we're still here. Amen. By the grace of God. We're still here. It's not that we've been so good. But it is because he's been so kind. Now when I look back over my life. And start to think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days so I won't I won't complain put your hands together and let's bless the Lord in this place so you may be seated we're so thankful today for you being here you could have been so many other places but you're here sharing with us on today and we're excited about it Amen. We're grateful for all of you who attended our 5.30 a.m. service this morning. Amen. It was not as chilly as I thought it was going to be. Amen. Amen. I didn't say it wasn't chilly. I said it was not as chilly as I thought that it was going to be. The Lord was gracious. And it was a beautiful sunrise this morning. I want to say thank you to all of our guests on today. We're thankful today visiting with us is Gwendolyn Brantley. And Aaliyah is here as well. And then we have 
Now, no, somebody said Athea. Yes, Athea is here as well. And then it looks like Darrell. Did I get that right? I don't want to mess up someone's name. Huh? Dare, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I thought that, but I wasn't sure, so I thought I'd take the easy way out. And I messed it up anyway. Well, thank you. And then, and then, and then, and then, my friend is visiting with us today, Mr. Gary Seleski. Amen. We're so grateful to have him here with us today. Gary is a part of our pushback team. And he's been with us, amen, from the time that we've started. He's been a great inspiration to me. And um, he's been a blessing as well. He's a man with many gifts and many talents. And um, one of the things that he said to me, he wrote me an email last year. And he said, Bishop Gordon, um, he was away over in the Bahamas for a while. And he said, you've been on my mind. I can't wait to get back. And he said, I just want to help you. I just want to do some things with you. I just want to be a part of what you're doing. The Bible says that he that would have friends must first show himself friendly. And you never know who God has divinely orchestrated to be a part of what you're doing. And so I'm so elated today uh, he wrote an email to Shonda and myself saying that he was coming and um, we tried to invite him to 530 he said that's a little bit early <laughs> and I wrote him back I said but Gary you live up on the beach so all you got to do is walk out he said no that's a little bit early I want to come to your 11 a.m. service and he did just that amen and I'm grateful I'm grateful. If I'm not mistaken, Aaliyah, did I get that? Girl. Aaliyah, stand up. Aaliyah was one of our students here at Shiloh Christian Academy. Look at you and her mom. You're beautiful. Oh, it's so good to see you. And all of our visitors on the day, and those of you who are watching us by live stream, you can be in so many other places, but you're here. And we're grateful. We want to say that our hats is off to our production team last night who orchestrated a great performance. Amen. And it was called The Power of the Word. And they did an awesome job. Would that team stand as well? Let us give kudos to you. Amen. They did a wonderful, wonderful job. And you never know. This is how Tyler Perry started out. You never know. God can have some great things in store. Amen. You have no idea what God has for you. I, I'm, I'm going to just for a moment put Gary on the spot. I told Lisa to go and tell him I wanted him to have words and I saw him shaking his head. No. No. But I know he knows me well enough by now and push back when I say what goes it goes. So he's visiting today and I got the mic. Would you all help me welcome a friend? Amen. Mr. Gary Seleski. He's just going to come with a few words. Amen. Impromptu. Amen. But God bless him on today. Come on. <laughs> I'm glad you. you said a few words. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I learned from Bishop Gordon is uh, service. And uh, I believe she has dedicated her life to service. I try to follow that same mantra if I can. I think it's what's going to bring us together. Um, pushback was a great avenue for me and many others, ministers, uh, uh, imams, 
demand. Uh, Moms, uh, mom demand action. Yeah, moms mm -hmm. demand action. Um, clergy from all over the county to get yes. together and talk about like-minded things and work together to make those things happen. And uh, I'm just grateful uh, for for the opportunity to talk to you and be a friend to Bishop Gordon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Gary was one of those persons that whatever we stood in need for and pushed back, he was there to help us make it happen. And he's from the Baha'i organization and the people from Baha'i just joined in with us as well. You never know who God again is connecting together. Amen. He bring people together for his purpose and for his will and his glory. And so we're just so thankful for what he's doing in us and through us and for us. As we move forward, we're so grateful for the opportunity. We'll be right back in our regular spaces coming up this week on Monday. We'll be back um, with our Let's Talk and our uh, guest for tomorrow night is going to be Elder Jonathan sharing with us um, his piece. And then we have another piece. How many of you are still doing the financial fast? Okay. Day 31. And so with that, I'm going to ask um, on the 17th, we're going to celebrate the end of the fast. It actually ends on the 8th or 9th of April, the 9th of April. And so um, after that, we're going to celebrate it, though, on the 17th. And I want to ask at least five persons who really did it and who um, it really blessed and helped, if you could give us your testimony on the 17th. Someone said to me, Bishop, I'm so glad that we did this because every morning, on my way to work, I stopped at Starbucks. And when I couldn't get the Starbucks, I stopped at that new coffee place. Uh-huh. I knew, uh-huh. I knew some of y'all knew it. Mm. Every morning, they would make a stop. And that coffee is 7 or $8 a pop. Amen. And um, since they started the fast... They said, I didn't realize how much money I was saving <laughs> by not stopping at the coffee shop. And some of you can attest to that as well. It's not how much you save. It's the fact that you started the journey. And that's what we are excited about. It has been said that if you do something for 30 days, it becomes a habit. So you've done it for 40 so I hope by now it's kicked in. And starting in April, we're going to be doing some things and sharing some things with you that whether you want to believe it or not, we are gifted and highly favored. I'm going to say that again. We are, notice I'm inclusive. We are gifted and highly favored. I'm not just talking about our church, but I'm talking about as a people. If you go back and study the history of our people, you will understand there's a reason why they went to Africa and brought some of us back over here. Amen. Amen. And believe it or not, I say that with respect, but we have been known over the years. Jonathan alluded to it on Friday night when he stated that George Washington Carver went into his laboratory every day not with a textbook, but with his Bible. And he prayed and asked God as he studied the peanut. If you know anything about George Washington Carver, he has over 300 patents that came out of prayer and a peanut. That's why you have peanut butter, jiffy, chunky, and smooth. <laughs> Amen. That's why you have some other things that's been made from the peanut. I just believe when we pray that God hears what we say. And if we know that he hears us, he can give us what's on the inside of a peanut. Amen. 
He can give us creative ideas. He said that he would do exceeding abundantly above all that we could what? Ask or think. The only thing that he asked us to do is ask him. And the Bible declares that there's nothing too hard for God. I believe that he will give you the secret of whatever it is that you're asking him for. For that's how things come about. And God has blessed us and gifted us to be very intelligent people. And we're asking God to give us the wisdom of what to do and how to do. Do you believe that? Amen. I believe that there are some entrepreneurs among us. I believe that there are some people that can start their own hairline business. Okay, y'all still sitting there. I believe that there are some other people, amen, that, that God can touch your mind and your hand and give you ideas, amen, that has not even been thought of as of yet. You can create your own secret recipe for chicken. Okay, that didn't go over too good. Uh, Colonel Sanders has his own secret recipe. And it's been working, but you got to work the plan that God has given you. Somebody just say to the Lord, Lord, what is it that you placed in me that needs to come out in this season of my life? Amen. Hallelujah. And just look at somebody and tell them, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And it is so. And so it is. Amen. So that's how we're going to be moving. Amen. Throughout the month of April, we want you to be a part. We want you to be tuned in. Because I believe that God has some great ideas for us. And then on Tuesday night, we'll be back with our class. And we're about to wrap that up. But I think that it, is, it has been very advantageous for all of us to move in the vein that the Lord is carrying us in. Amen. It has been good that we have been afflicted to the point that it's caused us to galvanize and come together. Look at somebody and say, I need you and you need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We are all a part of God's body. I want you to get your gifts in your hands all over this place. I want you to get your gifts in your hands. Amen. We come this morning as cheerful givers. We're so grateful that God has blessed us to be able to give. Amen. He has blessed us to be able to, be able to give. And we come today being cheerful. We're coming saying, thank you, Lord. That you have given us the ability and the power to get wealth. We thank you that all of our needs are met. Amen. We thank you that our bills are paid. Somebody going to hear me. Amen. Amen. We thank you, glory to God, that we have more than enough. Amen. Your word declare that you will do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or imagine. And these days, my imagination is getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. I keep saying, Lord, if you can do it for them, you can do it for me. They're not smarter than me. Amen. I, I'm smart too. It's very interesting as you prepare your gifts, those of you who are on live stream, thank you so much for being with us on yesterday. I was walking into Publix, got out of my car, and I was walking by myself going um, up to the door. I saw Brother Love, he was going in, and I thought, let me rush in here while Brother Love's in this store so he can pay for my groceries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to hurry up and get in the store because I knew if he, play, if he paid for my grocery, the Lord was going to bless him. The Lord has set up a great opportunity for him to pay for my groceries. Amen. And then I, I want y'all to know he missed it. He missed that opportunity. And this is the interesting thing is I was walking in the store and I saw him. He was already in the store and uh, I was pushing the basket and I saw Brother Love. I said, Brother Love, I was trying to get in here so you can pay for my food. He said, God bless you, Bishop. (laughs) 
I said to myself, he just missed it. Because the Bible says when you give in the name of a prophet, you'll receive. A, see, y'all, see, y'all just missed that. See, because I was only going in there to buy one thing and he missed it. See, he got nervous because he thought I was going to pick up a whole lot. I only want to. And this is the interesting thing. What I wanted, they didn't have. Say, what now, Brother Love? (laughs) So, Brother Love said he was shaking, so I wasn't in my right mind. I missed it. But that's. But that's all right. The Lord is good. But on a serious note, I was walking in the store. And as I was walking in the store, a young lady was walking out of the store. And she looked at me and we caught eyes. And she said to me, ma'am, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. She said, are you successful? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, are you really successful? I said, yes, I am successful. And she said, I knew that there could be some successful black people. I said, yes, ma'am, and I'm one of them. But this was the thing. She said, ma'am, the reason why I asked you that, she said, because I believe that I can be successful too. She said, I'm mixed. My mother is white and my father is black. She said, and I have kids. She was dressed in a uniform. She said, and my, I think she said, either husband or my boyfriend told me that black people can't be successful. And she said, ma'am, my partner, whoever it is, whatever, she said, he's white. And she said, I'm mixed. She said, but I just needed to see somebody else that looked like me. That could tell me that I can be successful I said baby I just want you to know you are successful she said thank you ma'am and she went to walk away and as she was walking away I said wait a minute come back here I'm not going to miss this opportunity let me take your hands and let me pray with you I need you to understand that whatever you set your heart and your mind to you can do it I need you to understand that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and tears start rolling down her face. I said, don't you let nobody tell you that you can't be whatever it is that you want to be. And from this day forward, I'm praying that you understand that you need to allow your confidence to come to the forefront. You need to understand that what God has placed in you, nobody can take it away from you. And don't let nobody talk down to you you because the day is the first day of the rest of your life I said you're beautiful and I wish you well she said thank you ma'am thank you so much tears was rolling down her face and I thought to myself how many of us don't realize that without confidence It doesn't matter how educated you are. If you don't have the confidence in yourself to know that you can accomplish whatever you set your hands to, there will always be somebody to come along and rob you of your self-esteem. And when somebody takes away your self-esteem, they just took away your success. Because as long as you believe in yourself, is nothing that you can't do. I decree and I declare that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things that God has in store for you. Can you just slip your hand up if I'm talking to you? And give God a praise. Father, we thank you for these gifts that we're bringing before you now. We thank you that we come today being cheerful, giving back to you. We thank you that you've given seed to the sower. Not only have you given seed to the sower, but we come bringing it, giving honor to you. Because it is you that have given us the power 
to get this wealth. It's you that have given us the confidence to understand that when we put our trust in you, it's no telling what we can do. So we bring this gift, no matter how great or how small, but we present it to you today. And Father, we declare and pray that you use it for your glory. And whatever your will is for our lives, don't let us miss it, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Give it back some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And then I read even where you give a thousand fold. And Father, today we say thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. They're coming to service us now. Amen. And the announcements will be played. Pull out your phone and start a watch party on Facebook. Be sure to like and comment and share this live stream. Tell your friends that new Shiloh is on. Stay connected. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms for weekly news and updates. The social media handles are on the screen. Tune in to Bishop Gordon on Zoom for Let's Talk on Monday evenings at 7 p.m. There will be midweek worship this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Are you in need of prayer? Join us every morning on the prayer line at 6 a.m. Call 267-807-9598. Access code is 3975901114 pound. The men of Shiloh will meet with all men on April 7th, immediately after the 11 a.m. service. Bishop Gordon will host Wednesday morning Bible study every second and fourth Wednesday of the month here at the church at 10 a.m. For more information, you can always visit our website at newshilohcc.org. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Jesus, he reigns. Hallelujah. Yes, nothing can keep him down. Come on. Hallelujah. Give him a praise in this house. Hallelujah, nothing can keep him down. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, all oh, hail, all oh, hail the King of Abraham. All oh, hail, all oh, hail the great.
you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jasmine is here visiting with us today. Jasmine, can you raise your hand? There she is. Hallelujah. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. How many of you know that the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in some of his ways? Did he say all of his ways? A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. This is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I am a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. And my life is the better. After having heard the word of faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I decree and I declare that it is so and so it is. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. John chapter 13, beginning with verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. He rises from supper and lay aside the garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherein he was girded. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Father, we thank you for this word on today. Only you can give us clear directions as to what you want to say. We don't know what it is, but one word from you can change our lives. One word from you can change our situation. One word from you can bring us from the bottom all the way to the top. Just one word. So my prayer today is open up our ears that we may hear what you're saying to us. Cause us to not only be able to hear you, but then cause us to be doers of what you're saying to us. So we thank you now. That you thought enough of us to send your word. Today, God, we say thank you because you've sent your word to heal us, to bring us into another space and a place with you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. The people of God said amen. amen. And amen. You may be seated. Years ago, for some of you who are around my age, maybe a little younger, there used to be a commercial that double mint chewing gum would market across our television station. 
and it was really selling us two for the price of one. See, two men, two men for the price of one double mint chewing gum was supposed to double the pleasure and double the fun. And it was so strong that it was supposed to double your breath because all you needed was one. It's interesting how the Bible alludes to the fact that when God calls one he always sends someone else along to be the support system for that one. But when you think about it, Moses had Aaron. And when God spoke to Abraham, he told him to get from around his kindred and get from around and out of the country. But he didn't send him alone. When we look in scripture, God always has someone that's there to help you on your journey. Sometimes we have to not allow those persons that God has put around us to become our source. We have to always keep in mind that they are a resource. Believe it or not, I don't care who you are, everybody needs somebody that they can talk to. Everybody needs somebody that they can lean on. Amen. Sometimes I have found that you have to be very careful with who that double person that you bring into your life. It takes time to get to know people. And it's important that we understand that God never intended for you to be alone. That's why he says in his word that he sent his son. And and when Jesus got ready to go, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you alone. But I'm going to send you what? A comforter. And he's going to be with you always. Even until the very end. Look at somebody say, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I might be riding shotgun. But don't get it twisted. I'm not by myself. He walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. He lifts me up. Glory to God. He allows me to lean on him when I don't have the strength to stand on my own. Glory to God. There are times that he rocks me in the cradle of his arms. There are times that I can't tell my double what's going on. But I can talk to him that's on the inside of me. How many of you know people don't always understand what you're going through. But we have something on the inside of us that will give us clear direction as to what to do. Isaiah said it like this. They that wait on the Lord. He shall renew our strength. It's easy when we look at the passage that I've chosen for today. It's easy to dismiss Judas in this narrative as a villain or as a victim. But I'm struck by the fact that Judas was just like some of us. Judas was a man that was chosen by God. However, he was a man who had a double mind. Some of us are double-minded even today, being uncertain or indecisive. Some of us often waver between two conflicting thoughts, two ideas, two desires, or different courses of actions. And when we are double-minded, it results in inner conflict and and inconsistent behavior. That's why some people that are your ride or die, they'll ride and die at the same time if you're not careful. It's interesting that as long as everything running good, your ride or die is riding with you. But the minute that something go wrong, 
you really find out were they really your friend at all or were they just going along for the ride in the season of my life I don't need no ride or die I need somebody that's going to stick with me to the very end. I don't know about you, but when I took my marriage vows, it said for better or for worse. It said for richer or for poor. I had a couple that wanted to get married and they said, Bishop, we want you to take that part out. I said, well, if I'm going to marry you, it's going to stay in. Because it doesn't matter how rich you are today. Money, watch this, come and go. Okay, somebody catch that in a minute. You got to understand that you can make some bad investments. And you can be on top of the world, glory to God, and mess around and make one investment. And it can wipe out everything that you have. We have to understand that you have to learn how to put your trust in God because he is the only sure foundation that we have. When we talk about the idea of being double-minded, it's important for us to understand as we're dealing with our ride or die, double-minded will cause inconsistencies in people's behavior. I don't know about you, but there's some people who love Bishop Gordon. And then there's some people that when Bishop Gordon don't do what she, they want Sister Gordon to do, then Bishop Gordon becomes the worst bishop there is. Watch this. But what people don't understand and sometimes we don't understand about God is the Bible says those he loves, he chastens. Oh, see, I just dropped the bomb and you didn't care. If you, if you have friends that won't tell you the truth, they're not real friends. If you have friends that go along with you and everything that you're doing and they just let you do whatever and it's okay, just know somewhere along the line the wagon is going to break off from the, from the, the, the wheel is going to break off from the wagon and you're going to find yourself by yourself. Watch this. But a real friend will tell you when you're right. Real friend will tell you when you're wrong. And a real friend will keep your secrets. Okay, y'all just missed that. A real friend, don't. it doesn't matter how mad they get with you. Or let me, let me rephrase that, how angry they get with you. You know, because when you get mad, you're crazy. Okay, but how angry they get with you. They are reminded, Sean, that I'm your friend. And when we were in real good, there's some things that you told me. And now that we've fallen out, nobody needs to know what is between me and you. Some things that I know, I'm going to take those to my grave because you trust me. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. When you put, when somebody put confidence in you, you have a responsibility to hold what is being said because you can't afford to be double-minded because surely as you mess somebody up, somebody is going to mess you up too. <laughs> the Bible says you reap what you sow. So Judas was a follower of Jesus. And not only was he a follower of Jesus, but he was a preacher of the gospel. However, Judas was double-minded. In Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, it tells us that Jesus called 12 men together. And he gave them power. I want you to really notice the text. He called 12 men together. He gave all 12 of the men power. Not only did he give them power, but he gave them authority watch this, to drive out demons and to curse diseases. If you're taking notes, you need to write that down because Jesus gave them power and authority. Most of us put power and authority in the same sentence and believe that they are the same thing, but they're not. Here it is. It makes it clear. Jesus gave them, a, he gave them dudamus, which is power power over the demons and the devils that they would encounter. Not only did he give them the deutimus power of God, but he gives them authority. You have to understand that there are some people who have been given power but, power, but they have no authority. 
There's some people who have authority, but they have no power. You say, well, Bishop, what do you mean by that? If God gives you a power, then he wants you to operate what he's given you under the authority of his name. Some people operate power from the authority of their name and it don't work. Let me say that again. Some of us have a power because we've gone and we've received higher education. Watch this. But we don't have authority because we have no influence. And watch this. Power and authority without influence causes you not to be able to get the job done. Okay, you got to understand that when you see a policeman with a badge on his shoulder, he has been deputized by the state of Florida or by the county or the city in which he is empowered to arrest you if you're out of line. Watch this. That bad speaks to you and say, not only does he have the power to arrest you, but he is an authoritarian figure who has been given the power to do what he does on the authority of somebody else's name. Okay, y'all didn't get that. Here it is in dealing with pushback. It's funny that I had the opportunity to to, uh, have some experience with the police department. And then from the police department, Palm Bay and Melbourne, Jonathan, I was also uh, invited to have conversations with the sheriff. Well, what I learned about that is you have Titusville, you have uh, Coco, you have Melbourne, and you have Palm Bay. Those are all the different police departments. But then there is another agency that's actually over all four of the cities that we live in which is called the sheriff department and so with the sheriff department then all of the chief of police they answer to the sheriff all right and so it was not enough, Ms. Rosetta, for me to meet um, Chief Gillespie and, 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 and the Chief of Palm Bay. But when I got up with Sheriff Ivy, I was walking in hot cotton. And when I got invited to uh, Sheriff Wayne Ivey's um, things that he invited me to, um, they had a name tag that said Bishop Gordon. And he said, Bishop Gordon, welcome to the Sheriff Department. I thought I was somebody. <laughs> Because I realized that everybody that they arrested in Melbourne ended up in Titusville. Somebody going to catch that. <laughs> a, a sharp Titus. Why y'all looking? Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. If you get arrested in Palm Bay, if you get arrested in Melbourne, if you get arrested in Coco, you're going to end up. Okay, that's going to be your dwelling place. Until you see, until you see the judge. Okay. <laughs> okay. The police had the authority to arrest. Re- Why y'all da- y- y'all giving me these units? Looking at me like, I'm sorry. If you got arrested, I didn't know it. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? If I, I, I'm, I didn't. I, I would have cut that part out. I didn't know. Okay. But you, di- <laughs> Jesus. I'm sorry, but, but can, I, can, I, can I make you comfortable? I almost got arrested myself. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I almost, I almost, I almost one day uh, I, I got stopped by the cop and, and I had my kids with me. This was years ago and um, I got stopped and, and, and they told me to give them a driver's license and this, that and the other and one of my children, Notice I didn't say children, but one of my children, they jumped out the car and wanted to know what you stopping my mama for. I said, baby, you need to be quiet. You know, and the more I'm trying to tell them to be quiet, I mean, she done took over. What is going on? Why did you stop my mama? And the police said to me, if you don't stop her right now, I'm going to lock you. I said, if you don't get in that car and shut up. You about to send me to jail. <laughs> Look at somebody say, you could be in the wrong place with the wrong people and end up in the wrong place. <laughs> oh, 
help us, Holy Ghost. So here it was. Jesus called, to, I got to go, Jesus called the 12. He gave them power and he gave them authority to drive out demons and to cure diseases. Watch this. He sent these men out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That was their assignment. Now when we get to John chapter 13, verse 1 through 5, here it was. They were getting ready for the Passover festival that was about to take place. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved, notice the scripture, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. That verse is going to be so significant as I move forward. He loved them until the end. The evening now was here and the meal was in progress. And the devil had already, notice what I said, had already prompt Judas to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things, watch this, under his power. Notice Jesus knew that God the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come, Jesus had come from God and was returning back to God because Jesus was the Son of God but God the Father was Jehovah. Jesus got up from the meal he took off his outer clothing and he wrapped a towel around himself. I need you to understand he's called these 12 men they have been in ministry with him for the last 3 years. Now he is preparing them for his departure. They're at a dinner the meal is prepared they're in the process of this Jesus, watch this being the son of God, now take off his clothes, gird himself wraps himself in a towel and then he goes to wash his disciples feet if you read this whole chapter you will find out that Peter says to Jesus what are you doing why are you washing our feet it's not for you to wash our feet if anything we should be washing your feet but Jesus said no 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 this is what I have to do I gotta wash your feet because I need you to understand watch this it's not enough for your body to be clean but I need your feet to be clean as well. See, because your feet is going to take you to places, watch this, that you're going to have to be responsible for your actions in because I understand that the enemy is not after your feet, he's after your head. Oh, somebody going to catch that. The enemy is not after your feet, he's after your head because your head tells your feet where to go. Your head tells your feet what to do and your head, your mindset actually controls controls the whole body. So after that, Jesus pours the water to the basement and he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Notice, he washes their feet, takes the towel off of his body and dries their feet. Notice again, he takes the towel, Jonathan, off of his body and dries their feet. He takes the towel off of his body and dries their feet. When Jesus does this, when they get to the very finish of everything, after he has washed their feet, he put his clothes back on and then he returns to the place of where he was. Then he asked them the question, Ernest, do you understand what I have done? He asked them. He asked them the question, do you understand what I've done? At this time, Judas is in charge of the money bag. Judas being in charge of the money bag, now he thinks to himself and, watch this, he has been all alone taking money out of the bag. Okay? Jesus was telling Judas, is it possible at this moment to go buy bread that's going to be needed for the festival or is he saying to go buy bread for the poor? The reality of that is Jesus was not saying neither of those things to Judas. He was letting Judas know, I know what you've been doing before we got to this place but I want you to keep in mind though I know what you've been doing all the time following me have the gifts have the ability have the power have the authority all the while you've been following me you've been taking money out the bag 
Watch this. While you've been taking money out the bag, I never said anything to you about what you were doing because I was hoping that you would come to yourself. I was hoping that you understood that I know your beginning from your end. I was hoping that you would come to the realization that every dime that you spent, I already know about it. I didn't call you on it because I was hoping that somewhere on the inside of you that your mind would click in to understand that I know everything about you and even though you're trying to keep this secret, you can't hide nothing from me. Not only can you not hide anything from me and I know you and I know what you've been up to I'm still going to position you and keep you in the place that I put you and wash your feet even though you're not doing right by me notice the text there are four things that I need you to see in this passage and I'll be out of your way for this Easter these four things that I need you to see you might want to write them down is that Jesus made a commitment his commitment was to Judas just like it was to the other 11 he said I've called you I called you by your name not only that I've given you power I've given you authority I've given you authority to cast out devils and I've given you authority to heal the sick I've given you authority to use my name watch this and you will see by the use of my name that you will have the same power that lives on the inside of me here it is Judas now because watch this he has accepted to be one of the 12 he took on commitment Judas takes on commitment and he makes a commitment and you have to understand that a commitment is being dedicated, loyal, and devoted to a person or a cause. So when Judas accepted to be a disciple, he now commits to God that I'm willing to follow after you and do the things that you want me to do. Commitment involves making a pledge or a promise. Commitment says I'm going to uphold, I'm going to uphold certain responsibilities. I take on the responsibility and the goals and the values regardless of obstacles or challenges that may arise. I am committed to the cause. Every time that Jesus did anything that he did, he took the 12 with him. I need you to keep in mind that every time he trained Jonathan, Judas was a part of it. I need you to understand that every miracle that Jesus did, Judas saw it. I need you to understand that Jesus now says to Judas, because I have called you, I am committed to you. To cause you to understand that I know what you're going to do before you do it. But because I called you, it don't change my assignment to you. Let's look at it. The second thing that he does is Judas is also given the same opportunity that everybody else is. Isn't it interesting, uh, Brother Adrian, that here it is. Judas has been called by Jesus along with the other 11 disciples. And he's given the same opportunity. Watch this. Jesus does not take away from him because he know what he's going to do. He give it to him anyway, hoping he would change his mind. He gives it to him anyway. This is what I need you to see. Judas walked with Jesus. Not only did he walk with Jesus, he was a witness of the miracles that Jesus did. Not only that, he saw Jesus feed the 5,000. He saw Jesus calm the storm. He saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. He heard of all the teachings. He heard the sermon on the mount. He heard the parable of the prodigal son. Watch this. With his own eyes, he saw the evidence. With his own ears, he heard the teaching. With his feet, he followed the example. And yet at the same time, according to Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful. Above all things, beyond cure, who can understand it? Can you imagine seeing Judas with the twelve, but having a different mindset of the twelve? Is it possible you can be called to a thing and be committed to a thing and don't have the heart of the thing on your mind? Let's look at it. 
Number three, I want you to write it down. The third thing that I need you to see is Judah's mindset is doubled because he's made that choice. Watch this. This messed me up, Lisa, because God says, before you ever knew who you were, I knew you. And I made choice of you before your mother and your father ever cohabitated together. I had a plan and purpose for your life. Nothing and nobody could separate you from the plan that I have. No matter what they did or allowed to happen to you from the beginning of time, I protected the seed that I put in you. And the gift and the power that I gave to you, I've kept it for my divine purpose and my divine plan. And no matter what came your way to try to take you out, I held on to you for purpose. And because I held on to you for purpose, I did it because it was my choosing. And then I gave you choice to see if you want to be in my purpose. Mm-hmm. That's why when you got so close to some stuff, woo, you thought you just pulled back, but it wasn't you pulling back. I was pulling you back and holding on to you because I knew up the road I had something greater for you. You, you didn't know it. Some of us was on the verge of a breakthrough and couldn't even see it. And the enemy was trying to wipe us out. But God, because he had made choice of us, saying I put something on the inside of you that I need you to make the right choice with and by. I need you to understand you're not here by happenstance. You're not here just because your mother and your father got together. You are here because I have a divine purpose for you. Not only do I have a divine purpose for you, but nobody can do what I've called for you to do. Nobody can ever be who I've called you to be. Nobody can ever do it like you're going to do it because I've given you the gift and the talent that I want to be used at that particular time, in that particular space, in that particular place. And can nothing and nobody substitute for what I have for you. Keep in mind that you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. Somebody said, no, I don't think I'm beautiful because I got big eyes and big lips. Do you not know God intended for your eyes to be just like they are? He intended for your lips to be just like they are. Oh, but Bishop, I I don't have long hair. Well, you don't have to worry about that. He knew and he knows how much hair you have on your head. He knows the number of strings that's on your head. You don't have to compare yourself to somebody else. You don't have to be like nobody. He says, I love you for you. I want you for you. I want to be to you what I want you to be to me. I need you to understand that I've given my life so that you can be all that you can be. Nothing is going to change my mind about you. No matter how many times you fall down, I've already put grace out there so it's going to rescue you. It's going to pick you up. When you feel like you're by yourself, I got a love that's going to hold on to you. If you just wait, I'm going to send somebody that's going to encourage you. If you just wait, I'm going to be the lifter of your head. If you just wait, joy is going to come in the morning. If you just wait, peace is going to come in your mind. Don't quit. You're in the right place. You're in the right space. You got to make the right choice. He says in his word, he says, I know your thoughts even before you think them. Glory to God. And whatever you're thinking, whatever it looks like, I've already made every crooked place straight. Ah, the Bible says that our footsteps have been ordered by the Lord. I don't care, Warren, how many times you fall down. I don't care how many times you feel like you can't make it. I don't care how much grief come in. I came to tell you, you're not by yourself. I came to tell you that the angels of the Lord are in camp round about you. I came to tell you that you are a servant of the most high God. I came to tell you that Jesus said he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He got you in the hollow of his hand. You just got to make the right choice. Look at somebody say make the right choice. Make the right choice. Don't let the devil rob you. Don't let the devil stop you. 
Don't let the devil tell you you can't do it. You can do it. You can do it. And you don't have to do it by yourself. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way because he wanted you to give him praise. He wanted you to give him glory. need you to see by the pen that Judas was right with the other 11 with a double mind and yet Jesus never forsook him he never turned away from him he never put him on blast he never put him on front street he said because I've called you this morning that God has called you by name. The Bible declares, Brother Tony, many are called. Oh, somebody better catch that. Many are called and few are chosen. Glory to God. I don't know if I'm in the few that's been chosen, but I'm in the ones that's been called. Oh, somebody better hear, I've been called by my name. I heard the Lord when he called me. Y'all can keep sitting there if you want it, but I heard the Lord when he called me. He called me out of darkness into the marvelous light. I was doing everything I wanted to do. Everything I was big enough to do. But love covered me. Love lifted me. Love held on to me. When I wanted to end it all, love stepped in. Hallelujah. He saw the tears that was in my eyes. He saw the tears running down my face. He saw that I didn't think that I was worth nothing. I wouldn't amount to anything. But I'm so glad today that love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. I look funny to some people, but love lifted me. Didn't get everything right, but love. So in spite of me, I've had to learn how to make some right choices. I couldn't let what nobody said about me be the end of my story. I had to reach down on the inside of me after making mistake after mistake after mistake. But hearing a small voice saying, I still love you. And as long as you got breath in your body, there's hope for you. I don't care how many times you messed up, as long as you can breathe, there's some hope. So Jesus sees Judas. And Shana, he says, I'm hoping that because I've called you, I've appointed you, I have anointed you, that no matter what you do, I won't turn my back on you. And all of what you're doing, I'm going to let the call that I have for you cover you. And I'm not going to turn away from you. The only way that you and I separate is when you turn your back on me. And even when you turn your back on me, I'm going to still be trying to woo you and get you back. So Judas goes along. And when you listen to the narrative, it says, read chapter 13 in its entirety. You will see after he washed their feet and he dried their feet. Jesus said, somebody in this room is going to betray me. And they started looking around. They wanted to know who is it that's gone. <laughs> I'm looking around this room right now and I'm wondering to myself, who is it that's on the Lord's side? Who is it that's been called to walk with me through the thick and the thin? Who is it that got my back? 
that when my back is against the wall, you might not ever say anything to me, but in your secret closet, you're calling my name, Lord. Remember, 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 remember. Help her, Lord, remember. I don't understand everything she's doing, but God help her. Give her grace, Lord. Give her strength. Help her, Lord. Be the lifter of her head. Help her, Lord. Put some joy in her heart. Put some peace in her heart. Don't let her mind go, Lord. Help her. Help her. Help her. Do you not know? It's easy to be critical. It's easy to criticize people. Ah, but look at somebody say, if you could just walk a day in my sh. Just put them on for a day. Face what some people got to go through every day. It'll cause you to keep your mouth shh. It'll cause you to go in your secret closet and say, God, I don't know what's going on with him, but help her, help her, help her. I don't know why she's acting like she's acting. I don't know why she's responding the way that she responded. But God, all I got to do is say, help her. What are you saying? Help her. Lord, help her make right choices. See, some of us can talk because we ain't been through nothing. But what do you do when the devil packs his bags and sit them on your doorstep? That part. What do you do when your children get in trouble? What do you do when your spouse walk out on you? It's easy to talk and run your mouth. But what do you do when your loved one is going on to be with the Lord? And you're having a hard time grieving over it. You got to learn how to pray one for another. See, it's easy to say that Judas betrayed Jesus. But you don't know what Judas was going through. And Jesus says, I need you to look at Judas just a little bit different. And I know that he was going to betray me, but I need you to see what I did to hold on to him. It wasn't my decision that he made the choices that he made. The last thing that I need you to see that's not in the text is though Jesus was waiting for Judas, watch this, to make the right choices he also needed Judas to know for every choice you make there is an outcome and Dr. Jeff the outcome is not always like what you think it's going to be so here it is they're sitting around the table Miss Pam and they're asking and thinking to themselves who is it who is it who is it? Who is it? Read the text. And Peter says, lead over to John. John, the, the disciple that was close to Jesus. Peter leans over to John and he says to him, who is it? Would you ask him who it is? I got tickled when I read that, John, because some people will push you up to do what they won't do. Because they don't know what the outcome going to be. So they'll put you up. And some of us. <laughs> some of us. <laughs> we bite it. I do it. And John leaned over. You got to read the text. The Bible said John leaned over on him. And John says to Jesus. Who is it? The thing that I like about the text, Gary, is that Jesus don't put Judas on blast. He said, I'm going to let you figure this one out for yourself. See, because any of you that can cast the first stone 
right now I have you all thinking are you the one are you the one are you the one are you the one listen I need you to know you are not so good that you don't need grace on you can't afford to put your mouth on nobody because you don't know where you're going to be on tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen in your family on next week Hallelujah. You don't know when you're going to be in Homes Regional or somewhere and going to need somebody to pray. So be careful what you do and what you say. He leaned over on Jesus and he says, Who is it? Miss Pam, didn't Jesus go in mystery form? I like it. Because he never put me on front street. And I'm guilty. But he don't put my sins out there. And the Bible says Jesus says to all of them at the same time. He said when I dip in this bowl. And I give the bread to the one that I give the bread. It's interesting Tim. That when Judas got the bread, Jesus didn't accuse him, but he gave him the bread. You know what's funny about that? Not only did he give Judas the bread, but he gave everybody the bread. But Judas, when he got his bread, what did he do? Tipped out. He tipped out. And he went to the high priest. Watch this. I don't get it, but I get it. He went to the high priest and they plotted a plan of how they were going to kill Jesus. I don't know about you, but in my life right now, I don't want to be a part of the plot that takes somebody else down. I don't want to be the person that's going to Cause somebody to miss the mark. The Bible says that Judas went out and he got with them and they made a plan. And you know the rest of the story. But in John 13 and 27, that one verse, I'm going to read it to you and I'm done. Because it's not my position to judge you. It's your position to look at yourself. I don't care who you are. You have to become transparent with you. You have to go to God for yourself. In verse 27 it says, And after the salt, Satan entered into Judas. It says him. Watch this Lisa. I need y'all to hear me. After the dinner. After the feet wash. After the drying of the feet. After the sup. The devil entered into him. Then said Jesus. Unto him. Being Judas. Judas. That thou doest what you're going to do quickly. I didn't tell you to do it. I didn't even want you to do it. I tried to hold on to you to keep you from doing it. Watch this. But because I couldn't change your mind. I did all I can do to hold on to you. But since you're going to do what you want to do anyway, go do it quickly. I thought to myself, saying, why would he say go do it quickly? And I had to think about it for a moment. Jesus already knew what he was going to do before he ever do it, did it. The problem was he didn't know he was going to do it. That concludes my last point. You can think you know what's going to happen when you do what you do. 
But it don't always work out the way you planned. When you put certain things in motion, you got to be careful. Because when you set it in motion, you can't stop it. No sense in praying now. Because when you had the chance to pray, you didn't pray. No sense in asking for help now. Because when you needed help, you didn't ask for it. No sense in crying out now. Because for three years, you had an opportunity that was afforded to you to go the right way. It was your choice that caused you not to become single-minded, but double-minded. I came to tell somebody today, the Bible says, he that hides his sins won't prosper. If you don't believe that, look around in our world system with what's going on today. It might and you might get by, but you won't get away. Listen to our news, y'all, over the last few weeks. There are things that's going on that's been covered up for long. But the cover is coming off. Things that people have gotten away with for long. But now it's being brought to the light. And you don't want it to be said. So close. And yet. So far. While you have a chance. And he's called you by name. And put you in a special place. Given you a power. And given you an authority. Don't take it for granted. There's some people who wish they were where you are right now. No matter what you're going through, it's somebody that's having it a little bit. Somebody wish they could take your place and they ain't backstabbers. But if they could just change places with you for a day, they wouldn't complain like you complain. If they could just change places with you today, they'll be saying, how great thou art. How great thou art. And it's on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross. It was the symbol of suffering and shame. And how I love that old cross where the dearest and the best where a world of lost sinners was slain. Today I cherish the old rugged cross. Today when I was walking in my double-mindedness had God on one side and doing what I wanted to do on the other but I had to make some choices I try to tell people all the time I'm not perfect I struggle just like you but my prayer is God help me to make the right choice can I be honest with you some days I miss it Miss Barbara I don't make the right choices but I read in the word of God where it says that I can come boldly before the throne of grace so I can find help in the time that that's what Judas missed he saw God Jesus do it for so many others but he didn't ask him to do it for him You cannot afford to let your shame, your pain, your frustrations, your aggravation keep you from the cross. 
If I have to go by myself, I'm going. If I have to walk alone, Miss Pam, I'm going. If my children don't want to go, I made a decision, I'm going. If I have to stand by myself, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. And though my sins can be a scholar, if I can come to him, he'll make me whiter than snow. You know what I learned? If you confess your faults, he'll forgive you. And he won't hold them against you no more. He'll throw them in the sea of forgiveness. And he'll give you double for your trouble. He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll give you a fresh start. Some people won't forget it. But that's not your problem. It's theirs. Today you can stand boldly in Christ a new creature. Today you can declare that old mind that I had. I'm leaving it on the altar today. Everybody's standing. Hallelujah. If you will, put that on the screen for me. Sandrine, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you sing it with me? On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering.
Till my troll feeds at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And in change someday for a crown Verse 4, verse 4, the last one Verse 4. Go back to verse 1 then. Verse 1. Verse 1. On a hill far away. On a hill. Cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. Hallelujah. I'll cling. Yes, yes, yes. I'll cling. I hold on to the old rugged cross. One of these days, I'm going to exchange it. I've been carrying the cross, but one day, I'm a, one day, 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 one day. They hung him high, they stretched him wide. Hallelujah. For me, he died one day. 
One day, one day, he got a crown set up for me. One day, one day, I'm gonna wear my crown. Hallelujah! But can you just tell somebody in the meantime, I gotta hold on. I gotta, I gotta hold on. I gotta, I gotta hold on. Hold on. It ain't easy, but I gotta hold on. It don't always feel good, but I gotta hold on. I don't always like it, but I gotta hold on. Hallelujah. 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 This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But if you're in this room, I don't know the Hey, hey, hey. There's a praise in this house. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Woo, I'm trying to be dignified, but glory! Somebody on this side shout glory. Somebody here say hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Anyhow. Hallelujah. Anyhow. For five seconds, give them an anyhow praise. Somebody. I've been through the storm and the rain, but anyhow. Had some good days and some bad days. But anyhow. Sometimes I don't even know how I made it over. But anyhow, I bless him, I bless him. Give it up for the word that has gone forth in this house. The doors of our church are open at this moment in time. I know you just came for Resurrection Sunday. But this is your Sunday to get up and be on the Lord's side. What a great church and a great place to be a part of. The family of Shiloh. Yes. We welcome you. It, it will there be one if you're not saved and you need to know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or if you're looking for a church home. Amen. The doors are open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on, just pray, saints. You don't know. Somebody's making a choice. It's all about choices. People will tell you, you don't need to go to church no more. You better make your choice. Stop letting people tell you what you need to do. No, I need to be in the house of the Lord. There's a table that's prepared for me. Amen. Amen. If you don't have a church home, if you need to know the Lord, I want to give you... One more minute while the Spirit of the Lord is here. Some people like to do it tomorrow or they want to wait to a better time and a better moment. There was a songwriter that said, tomorrow is not promise. Don't wait until tomorrow. You better choose the Lord today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Father, let them make the decision. Yeah, we we come against double-mindedness. Yeah, we come against, we we speak a sound mind, a sound decision, a sound choice over your people. Thank you for this word that has gone forth. 
whoever is not saved, dear God, I pray that you will cover them and be with them and let them know you are a very present help in the time of trouble. And it is so. In Jesus' name, Shiloh, give yourselves a hand.